Hey ladies, it's Jeannie from A1 Vacuum and Sewing. And I know, believe it or not, I'm actually going to be finishing up the two scoops bench pillow. Um, we had a quilt show which consumed my time for the last couple of weeks. So I'm finally getting back to this. Um, all of my embroideries are complete. And now all I'm doing is I am pressing them out. I am squaring them up and then I am going to to sew them all together. So these are ones that have been done previously and um, some of them have been all stitched together like this section right here has been stitched together. These have been stitched together. These have been cut and pressed. So I'm going to put these to the side and let's start with what we had finished up and I, I think I did these probably at least two weeks ago. So um, what I'm going to do is I like to go ahead and uh, cut these all apart. So if they haven't been cut apart yet, I am going to cut them apart. And I'll cut them from the back side because I can see where the lines are. Uh, and you kind of need about half an inch. That is the seam allowance. Um, or that way you can cut the seam allowance well. So um, let me just go ahead and separate these. And while I'm doing that, my iron is in the process of heating up. Here we go. Let me cut this one too. And all this leftover I'm going to use for cup of cheer because that's what we're going to be doing next. When I press these, I like to press from the back side. So I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot of best press from the back side. I always look to the front to see if my fabric is directional because I don't want to distort it. And then I will just go ahead and press away. I use all of my body weight. Because your whole goal, for me, my whole goal is to get this to um, just lay flat. So when you um, when you stitch it together, everything will be nice and squared up. I don't I don't worry about whether or not when I trim it, the um, square line is totally accurate. Doesn't make a difference. That'll get encased in your seam allowance. So, and if you want to press it from the front too, you can. But that looks pretty good to me. And see how quick this is? Don't even worry about that. You're going to you're going to kind of fussy cut it with your pop ruler. And then you won't even notice that. But you want everything to be laying flat. And you don't want it to be ripply. Uh, pressing into a wool mat helps because it distributes the fabric as you press it down. And I always get questions about why I use muslin instead of um, no-show mesh that, that, that it calls for. Or the light mesh cutaway same thing um, I use it because it's softer and more pliable and I like the way it feels in my finished quilt so um, and uh, one of the other things that's nice about it is it usually is cheaper too it's cheaper so this is directional I've striped so I'm gonna press this way first um, it's usually cheaper than using no show mesh but for me it's more a tactile thing I like the way it feels and I like my end result. That should be good. I will go ahead and give it a little press this way too. And that looks gorgeous. So just go ahead and press all of these out. This is non-directional. See if I can get my camera. You're just getting rid of any ripples. If there are any in your fabric. All right, I don't want to bore you. So I'm going to pause the video and I am just going to go ahead and press these. And I'll rejoin you for squaring these up. 
All right, now that my um, blocks are pressed out, I just have an array of rulers. So I'm gonna put those to the side. And then I'm gonna be using my pop rulers. These are well worth the investment if you are gonna be doing Kimberbell because most of them are gonna be cut to these sizes. Um, and then we have our little handy dandy cheat sheet, which I, um, I took my measurements. I added a category over here, which was pop ruler size or final cut size. Cause some of them you won't use pop rulers, but let's go ahead. And the other thing we can refer to as well is going to be our instructions. So I think this one right here is called melted. I'm going to put the others to the side because I think with my last one, I accidentally grabbed one and one was sticking to it. And then I cut through one into the other one. I was able to save it, it wasn't a big deal, but um, it wasn't ideal. So for melted, I think this one is called melted. I'm just gonna kind of grab them in order. Melted is on page 31. Let's see, so in my next section right here, there's 31 and Right here, it wants you to nest, and we are gonna be nesting all three rulers together. So these are all the rectangular ones. So your eight and a half by um, uh, 10 and a half, your six and a half by eight and a half, and your four and a half by six and a half. We're gonna nest all three of them. Let me pull this out of the way. And what it wants you to do is it wants you to um, cut the top and the bottom first, and then you're gonna remove the rulers. So um, the instructions are showing it like this. So we are gonna line it up side to side, left to right, and you're gonna kind of frame the outmost, the biggest um, uh, stitch line. And you never wanna to cut to the stitch line because you're gonna see my stitch line is way inside of the ruler. So as you stitch, a lot of times your design gets pulled inside. And then we're gonna put the other ones and we're gonna line those up with the top and the bottom. And I need to move way up. There we go. And then I'll pull those out again just to make sure they look good. That I'm lined up with the two outside ones and I am pretty equidistant put these back in and I have to nudge it down a little bit there we go and nudge it up a little Out, and that looks good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut top and bottom and then I'm gonna cut the sides. So it wants do not cut the left and right edges. So we are gonna go ahead and cut the top and bottom. We're gonna pull the two inner rulers out and then we're gonna cut left and right and then we'll match up our lines. All right, um, best rulers or rotary cutters will be a 45 millimeter, don't use, I also use a 60 at times, and I love a rotating mat. Makes it easier to cut, so I'm gonna do my top and bottom cut first. Right, roll that down just a little bit. Here we go. I am gonna go ahead, hold this, hold everything down, and then spin. Make sure you lean your ruler into the pop ruler. We're gonna take these two out. I was talking with somebody and we were laughing about how the first time we used our pop rulers, how um, we just cut into our block. <laughs> So you do need to be somewhat careful and lean into the pop ruler and not into your block. All right, that is everything you're gonna do with your pop ruler and then we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna extend those lines out.
So the end size is going to be four and a half inches. This ruler here just happens to be four and a half inches. So it might be perfect just to kind of line up with these edges. And cut the top and the bottom. There we go. I could have just fussy cut to that ruler too, but that looks pretty perfect. I am gonna toss that on the pile of done, done designs. Let's grab our next one, and our next one is going to be, um, let's look at our ruler. Not our ruler, but our chart, cart. So cart is gonna be um, cut to five and a half by eight and a half, so we're just gonna grab that size pop ruler, eight and a half by six and a half, this one. That doesn't look quite right. Let me grab my instructions. Oh, you know why? Because I grabbed my truck. This is the truck. Let me grab the cart. Cart, cart, cart. Here we go. So when you have one like this and it lays right inside of your pop ruler, you can just kind of Fussy cut it, cut it to the ruler and um, just get it as equidistant as you can, left and right, top and bottom, and spin it around a little bit just to make sure it looks good. That looks good to me. And on the sides, you know what I'm looking at is the top of the cart. I'm going to make sure I'm lined up with the top of my cart and that's about half an inch i think i need to nudge it up a little bit here i think i'm good okay i just want to make sure the line of this was equal to the line of it's not I'm going to use this ruler I think that looks a little better there we go okay I'm ready let's cut it Lean into the pop ruler. Hold it down as you rotate. Make sure you have a good rotating mat. And it might not get the very corners, that's okay. Just finish off your cut. There's your cart. Complete. You scream. I'm guessing four and a half by six and a half, which is perfect. Let's confirm with this. You scream four and a half by six and a half. Okay, fussy cut. Line up your ruler with the edges. I'm gonna check left and right. And this design is at an angle, so.
Did I do it all? I did. Okay, you scream. How about ice cream? Here's our ice cream block. This might be big enough to get another, like a four by four. We'll keep that little piece. Most of it I'm just throwing away. I do throw things away, I know. It's hard to believe, because if you know me, you know I hoard everything. But sometimes I tell myself, enough is enough, Jeannie. Okay, let's go right there. I'm looking left and right. We're top and bottom. All right, ice cream. Looks good. I love this one ice cream sandwich I think that's what this one is called this is also four and a half by six and a half and I'm just looking at the outline stitch around them um, ice cream sandwich is four and a half by six and a half okay get it lined up I'm gonna check top and bottom of course it moved too so this has been like the one that is closest where it actually is almost on the line Ta-da! We all scream for ice cream. And don't forget, when you are done, you can get your scissors. And these are the best ones. These are my side hoppers. Um, I should grab my side hoppers too. These you can take the little hook in, and these are the OESD ones. Give it a snip right here. I like to turn it over the opposite direction and give it a snip right there. So with all of your little jump threads, just go ahead and... I, I find that I have to do one cut to the left and one cut to the right. And then it just looks amazing. Okay, let's go ahead and trim this one. This again, four and a half by six and a half. I thought this this um, bench pillow was pretty easy. Of course, I'm not quite done. I'm gonna square to my lines. That's what I'm gonna pay most attention to. Just to make sure they're even left and right. Left and right, I think, is more important on this one than top and bottom. I 
going to get this one done. It's summertime. It's ice cream time. I can't wait to finish it and get it displayed in the store. Oops. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, but I kind of cut into my corner a little bit, but that'll be okay. We all screen. Now we have, um, is this my last one? I think this is. This is going to be the ice cream truck. And ice cream truck, I think, is going to be nested with six and a half by eight and a half. All three of them again. Oh no, only two of them. Six and a half by eight and a half. And the final size is going to be six and a half by ten and a half. So, um, you know, you could always use a ruler too, because this is. This is a six and a half by 12 and a half. So I could go ahead and just do it to this. And then I could cut three sides all at once. Quite honestly, it's almost a little hard to see under there. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for, for my oldies but goodies. Go with my pop rulers. Okay, so we are gonna go ahead and line it up. We need the other one. This one, the big, biggest two rectangular ones. So left and right, get that first, and then top and bottom. Okay, so it looks good top and bottom. Let's see how we're doing left and right. I think that looks good. I'm gonna cut top and bottom first and then we'll go left and right. Oops, okay, swing the whole thing. This is no time to rush. Just take your time to do these. Okay. We're gonna take out the inside pop ruler and now we're gonna cut the left and the right side. Then we will go ahead and okay, get that out of the way. And now we're just going to go ahead and trim the rest. Get it lined up with the top. In the bottom. And we are done with that. Let's get ready. We're going to group them up and then we'll sew them all together. I'm just going to clean up my work area. Now that everything's pressed out, I grouped everything together. We had finished sewing this together with the first day of our sew along. And so I'm just going to work in pairs. Um, I'll go ahead and sew this together and this together. On the very top of this, I'll sew the melted and the ice cream truck together. And then down here, I'll sew this together with this together. Um, I'm just going to use my dual feed walking foot with the quarter inch sole. If you have this foot and you haven't gotten all the soles, you should because they're amazing. And then the other thing I'll be using is um, 
my gypsy quilter cutting gizmo and this is just to cut everything apart. So let's go on over to the machine. All right, so I'm set up for sewing. I'm gonna be using stitch 103, which, which is a straight center stitch. I like to piece at 1.8, but because I'm working through all these layers, I'm gonna leave it at 2.5. I have the remnants of a white bobbin in there. I'm gonna try and use that whole thing up. And on the upper, I'm just using, I really, I piece often with Deco Bob. This is an 80 weight thread, and I kinda just go between um, cream, white, light gray, sometimes khaki, whatever is on the top of my machine, I kind of just use. <coughs> You're not going to really see the thread in this, so for me, the cream is just fine. I love the 80 weight thread because, uh, you know, most of the time people are piecing with um, maybe a 40 weight or a 50 weight, and the 80 weight has the strength of a 40 weight, but it is half as bulky. It's half the, it's ha half as thin. Um, I'll go ahead and sew these two together. I'm just going to grab my pieces as I go. I'm not going to be using pins. I'm just going to line it up because the pins sometimes can shift everything around. And uh, as far as pressing, I will press these seams open and flat. Um, I'm going to press them open and flat because they're going to get bulky. Sometimes when you're pressing these or when you're sewing these together, it can push the top down. So I'm going to sew in a little bit and then back stitch and then sew. I'm just going to keep everything at a quarter inch. Hope that's a quarter inch. I'm gonna move this over here so I can see a little bit better. I know it's gonna be a little bit to the right. That's so I can see head on. And I'm gonna grab my next two. Next one I'm gonna do will be these two, melted and ice cream cart, or ice cream truck, that is. Let me get these lined up. They look like they match pretty well. You could wonder clip them if you wanted. And if you sew them together and then they're way off, redo it. I'm gonna do cart and ice cream sandwiches. It's making me want some ice cream again. I am not a big ice cream person, but this, I mean, how many gallons of ice cream do you think people have eaten just because they've been doing this quilt? It's all you can think about. I think it's all I've been talking about. And I still haven't gotten my pistachio ice cream. I did get Cold Stone. I can't pretend like I didn't get anything because I did get Cold Stone. But uh, the other day we were, Patrick and I were at the grocery store and I was, he was already at the checkout. And I was like, should I get pistachio ice cream? And he didn't answer me. And I, I got up to the counter and I was like, Did you, were you ignoring me on purpose? Did you not want ice cream? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut these apart. Here is my handy dandy chain piecing cutting tool. make sure my iron is hot which it is not and I will be using some best press and you just want to make sure they're pretty lined up I mean I'm a little bit higher there than I am there that's okay um, I just compensate when I sew it all together it's really up to you what are you gonna tolerate what is good enough 
So we will do those next. So um, I'm a little bit more to the left than to the right. I'll just compensate when I sew it all together. So if it's really bad though, unstitch it and redo it. I'm gonna go ahead and press these seams open first. So for me, it's a, it's a two part process. Press it open first and then spray it with breast press and press it one more time. And if you're really, really, really doing it um, to get these seams laid flat, then you can use your clapper. I love my clapper. I keep thinking I should get, sorry about that. I keep thinking I should um, get the long one because there's times where I just need it to be longer. But it lays so flat when you use your clapper. I mean, look at that seam. It is like so flat and just fantastic. All right, go ahead and open up all these seams. So we're gonna sew together, there's three sections. We're gonna sew those three sections together and then we're gonna attach the side pieces, which will be the green and white stripe awning. It's been such a wonderful day here in Reno. I love, it is um, <clears throat> unseasonably cool. So it's been in the low 70s. It's my favorite temperature. We've got like one more day of that and then it'll be in the 90s, low 90s, which I'm okay with too. Okay, now that that is sewn together, now this is going to be um, section two. This, with this, with the cart and the bottom piece row with pink in the upper corner. So we'll go ahead and sew all of that together. Oh, I left one. This one didn't get sewn in. Okay, so this and this and this, I'm gonna put this to the side. So that's all matched up. And then we're gonna have, uh, next section will be these two with this and this. So I'll go ahead and sew these two together. Okay, let's go to the machine. Matching up my sides and my top, and go ahead and start here first. 
Now I'll do this section right here. I'm going to sew the, this top row to the second row. Sew right off of that. Just a little bit. You never want to sew. Um, it's not like a serger. Your sewing machine's not like a serger. So you don't want to sew long lengths where it is not, where there's nothing underneath. It's not good for your feet. And put this one on top. Okay, let's cut them apart and then we are going to press them out. I know it takes a little more time with the clapper, but I feel like the end result, I mean, this is just going to be on the inside of a pillow, but um, it just lays so much flatter.
I mean, those, these sections, they're just so much nicer. Okay, here we go. That one is done. That's going to be added to that, I think. Right? Have to look. Let me go ahead and press this open. Same thing. So number one, that best press is going to make it lay really flat. In addition to the clapper, It's fantastic. Look at that seam. Okay, so um, pretty sure that goes to that. So I'm going to fold it over, put it next to the machine. And I'm pretty sure this one goes on the very bottom. So let me go ahead and press this open. If you hear heavy breathing, it's not me. It's Momo. Or actually, it you got a 50-50 chance it might be me. When I am uh, sewing and embroidering and pressing, I relax and I start to breathe really heavy. So if I ever had a sewing name, like you know how GJs have names, my sewing name would be so Sewist Heavy Breather. Or Sewist I'm Only Human because I make lots of mistakes. <laughs> Okay, this is going to go right here, and I already put the other piece at the machine. Let's go to the machine, sew those last couple sections together. Here we go. It's nice to sew. I haven't sewn for probably two weeks, because like I said, we have the quilt show, which happened, and... Uh, It always just takes us a long time to recover <laughs> from that. It's so much work. All right. Let me get this one. Let me make sure that is looks great. my next two this section right here like this make sure before you start stitching that you have it laid down right I think I had to take one of mine apart because I had um, I had upside down or something Thank you. 
There's the, this is the corner. That's the corner I sliced into. So if that doesn't look quite right to you, it's not, but it's okay. Because I have one straight line, one straight um, edge. All right. Got my cutter. Let's go to the machine. Let's press that out. And then we'll th sew the three sections together. And now we can go ahead and after I press this one, we'll sew section one to section two, section two to section three, and then we can add the side pieces. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and sew these two together. Um, you have this one seam that should match right here, so I would go ahead and maybe clip on either side of that and get some wonder clips and the rest of it I wouldn't worry about. I like, I like to kind of just lift up lay down and then the other thing I like to do is if I have one piece that is smaller than the other piece I always like to put that on top um, so it looks like the bottom one because I feel like if you need to stretch it or pull it to get it to fit or ease that fabric, it's easier to ease it when the smaller piece is on the top. And this is a pillow. Just remember it's a pillow. You're going to be putting something in here that's big and squishy. And so if things don't totally line up, it's okay. Do your best.
It is nice to have your seams line up though. And as I'm sewing, I'm just kind of pulling the top a little bit to get it to fit the bottom. how the piece two and three go together and we can always um, press these out at the same time so we're, we have two spots that need to match right here and down here so I'm going to put in some clips on the very top first and then I'll put some clips on the bottom and I'm just looking straight down at it just making sure they line up That's pretty darn good. Let me get two more clips. Let's go to the machine and sew. And then we'll grab our, then we're gonna press it. And then we'll grab the um, green and white striped fabric. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to press those. Time to press. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. Okay. It's just adorable. how flat we get that center seam. Number one, best press. Number two, clapper.
All right. Ta-da! Next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead. Um, we have just done this right here, which is so section three to section to the section half unit. Um, not sure what that means. Oh, here's my section half unit. So we just sewed all of that together. Now we're going to sew the outer borders to the left and right side of the pillow top. Press seams towards the border. So we're going to press the seams that way and that way. Uh, let me go grab that. Okay, here are my side seams. Let me grab that or my side borders. They have been floating around on my... Um, sewing table for a while so I'm just going to give them a quick press and we're going to attach one here on this side your stripes should be running horizontally and one here on the other side so I'm going to go ahead and stitch that down. Make sure you have right side to right side. And then I'm going to do it on the, uh, this the right side. I'll do it on the left side. I'll be right back. Let me go ahead and stitch that. Okay, so I sewed my two sides on. Um, this one was a little longer, but don't worry about that. That'll get trimmed out. And the instructions said to uh, press your seam um, to the border. So I'm going to go ahead and set the seam first. This will relax the stitch. And then I'm just going to go ahead and fold it over. That seam's going to go out towards the border. So you have a bunch of stuff here that you don't want your iron to get on. But I'm going to go ahead and just give it a little press right along that edge. And in this case... I'm just going to go ahead and hold it with my hand because I don't want to touch those uh, the glitter or the leather or the vinyl. But I do want to press it kind of out. Look how cute those little Sunday, the little ice cream or milkshakes. What do you call those? Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to go ahead and press the seam just to relax it. I've already, so the back, I usually will piece my back, so I started doing that. Got to find it. And I'm going to be putting, that is all fabric, I think. So I'm going to be, I kind of want to press straight out. instead of up because I did distort mine the tiniest bit. Oh, that looks cute. Adorable. Okay. After you do that, your instructions say, um, top stitch one ribbon over the seam between the pillow top and border. Repeat for other end of pillow. Be sure to offset ribbon on the seam far enough that appliques are not covered. So this is going to be your ribbon right here. And you need to, so I'll give this a little press. You don't want to cover the over the embroidery. It might be kind of good. I think what I'm going to do is as I lay it down, I'm just going to line up um, the blue. This is what I'm going to do, just so it's going to be even. Is I will go ahead and lay this down and line up. I don't think I want to go over to this side. I'm going to peek under as I'm sewing and I'm going to line up this left edge of the blue with my seam. And I'm just going to kind of peek under and lay it down like this and just make sure that this gets lined up with the seam. So before I do that though, let's press it out. We've never had ribbon to put down before. This is going to be cute. So I guess I'll just take this and cut it right in half. Should be 16 inches. I already have a cream color. Yeah, I have cream in my machine, so that's kind of perfect. I'll just fold this over. 
Let's cut it in half. I'm gonna make sure it's 16 inches before I cut it. Yep, just over 16 inches. That would be horrible if it was, uh, I don't know. I guess it'd be horrible if it, if it was anything other than at least 16. Let's go on over to the machine. And I'm gonna change out my sole. Um, I guess I'll put my open toe one on. So let's go to the machine. So here is my open toe. Looks like my bobbin needs to be changed. I'm just gonna do it now, cause look, I am almost out. And I'm just gonna put another white pre-wound in. I almost always, must always use pre-wounds. Let me grab scissors. I think the rule is uh, you want to use um, thread. It's going to be the same as your fabric so that your thread, your fabric doesn't wear out before your thread so the thread doesn't cut through it. Something like that. But I'm not worried about my stuff wearing out. I mean, does somebody really want this in 100 years? I don't know. We'll see. This is just uh, entertainment for me. That's all this is. That's entertainment. Whoop. Okay, so I'm going to line that up here. I'm going to have it go a little bit off the top. And I actually am going to sew from the bottom. Hey, my family just got home, so you might hear a ruckus. Whoop. Don't know what's to the back. I was thinking about it, and I think I am going to, you know me, I'm not much of a pinner. But I think I'm just going to pin this. I love magic pins. Let me go over here. And I love them because, well, I guess they don't have to be magic pins. But um, I love thin pins because they go through the fabric so easily. And let's go ahead. Okay. These, I think, were extra fine or fine. And I'm pinning it into uh, the fabric on the right just because It'll be harder to pass it through the thick parts. And the other thing that may make it easier for me to pin too is getting the wool mat out from underneath this. Then I can push into the, into the um, cutting mat. But we do that, you can see. And again, I'm just lining up this edge right here with the seam. I guess that would be the left edge of the left stripe.
right. Let's go ahead and flip this. Do the same thing over here. This way for the very, very top. All right, pinned and ready to sew. It's cute ribbon. And we'll just go ahead and top stitch. I'm just gonna leave it at a, a stitch length of 2.5. I'm just gonna sew about an eighth of an, an eighth of an inch away from the the edge. Let me back this up a little bit so I have some room. Okay. You know, the biggest reason I think I'm not a pinner is I'm a, I'm a stabber of myself um, with pins. I just, it's like, Pin tips are, uh, like, they can't, I can't keep them from stabbing my, stabbing me.
Let's go ahead and do the other side. All right. Next. So we top stitched. Now we're going to do optional quilting, which we're not going to do because we've already done that. Um, we can go ahead and attach the embellishments. Let's go ahead and grab them. 